All right. So then uh, welcome to the, I think, third session implementation of ORAN radio stack with different open source community. Uh, in the beginning, it will be uh, Florian and me speaking, and then we have two more sessions. So we in the beginning talk about open air interface, then we will have uh, a talk about the ORAN software community and then one talk by Redis's. Um, so the first talk is entitled OAI Working Practices Development Pro Process and Roadmap. So this will be, well, first starting Florian Kaltenberger, and then I will also say a couple of words. So, I mean, I guess most of you already know him, but Florian uh, is professor at Euricom, but currently doing a sabbatical here at Northeastern University. So he's also kind of a host here for us. And... He is currently special advisor of the uh, Open Air Interface Software Alliance board. And yeah, please welcome Florian. He will start to give the talk and then we'll hand over to me. I'll use this one, it's okay. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks Robert. And thanks for agreeing to letting me share this presentation with you so that I also get to say a few words, a few technical words here at this, uh, at this workshop. So, um, what we planned uh, um, for this talk is um, to first of all show you a few highlights of the new features um, that were introduced in, in Open Air Interface in the in the last in, in this year in 2023, um, and and also show you the current uh, KPIs that we can achieve with uh, with Open Air Interface. So I'll be I'll be giving <clears throat> that part of the of the presentation, and then Robert is going to take over and tell you more in detail about all the um, integration work we have done, especially in the context of, of ORAN. So as Raymond mentioned in the beginning, uh, this year has really been focused on interoperability um, with, um, with ORAN and getting OAI uh, ready for ORAN. And um, of course, as uh, usual for this uh, workshop, um, we're going to talk about the, the, route, the roadmap uh, for, the next, uh, for the next year, what, we, um, what we're planning to, to, what the focus for the next year will be. And um, there are some, some new um, um, developments as well. We, we want to um, talk a little bit of, about the releases, the release cycle, upcoming release cycle. And last but not least, of course, the, the CI and the uh, NCD. So um, we tried to summarize on, uh, on one slide here um, the, 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 the key new features um, that have been introduced in open air in 2023. Um, so this is really just the tip of the iceberg. As you heard, a lot of work has been gone into, you know, stabilizing the code, re-architecturing and improving KPIs. But in terms of new features, this is, um, this is basically the, um, the highlights here. So we have um, Uplink uh, two times to MIMO now, um, which works with, uh, with uh, commercial UEs and also with, uh, with the OAI UE. Um, there is um, a first uh, basic uh, support for FR2. So we've been working for a very long time um, with, um, to, to, we've been trying a very long time to get FR2 work with, um, um, with COTS UEs, um, but that works in, in a certain limited way. But what works actually better is with the, with the OAI UE. Um, so that, that is now already available. And, uh, and Neil mentioned this in the beginning as well. This is the, the what, what, um, they, they um, was done together with NI and Team Ytech and all this much. Um, one uh, project that I'll say a little bit more about later um, is support for um, inline layer one offload using the NVIDIA Aerial SDK. Um, that's a, a, a new thing that we did this year, um, which is um, um, allows to scale up open air interface um, using layer one acceleration. And yeah, as already mentioned, a lot of work on, on F1 and E1 interface, um, so which are um, which are enablers for all run deployments for for split architecture CUD deployments. Um, so a lot of work has been going on in the background to allow um, for reconfiguration um, over the F1 interface, reestablishment, and and also be able to help handle multiple DUs um, and CUU planes. Per, uh, per CU. A um, lot of work has also gone into the 7.2 interface, so the frontal interface. So we're now compatible with um, um, different uh, uh, radio units. 
all run radio units. Some today, some work better than others, but as, as we alluded in the panel, it's a long process. So eventually, they will all um, work equally well. well. Um, and um, one one key feature this year has also been the the support for the E2 interface um, with the uh, E2 agent in the GNOME B supporting uh, KPM um, version two and three and um, the, the the run control uh, version one. All right. There also um, a lot of work has also gone into the the UE. Um, so as again said before, the the, the MIMO um, uplink MIMO as well as downlink MIMO two by two um, works with the with the OAI UE as well. Um, there's been a lot of work going on to the interoperability with uh, with the commercial GNOME Bs. Um, so we're not there yet, but um, we, we, we're getting there. Uh, Sidelink, um, we have um, um, implemented Sidelink, or partners have implemented Sidelink in the OAI-UE, and I believe there will be a demo um, of this uh, this afternoon. Um, reconfiguration with sync and measurements, a lot of improvements uh, in multi-threading, and this is um, in part to make it work with commercial GNOPs. We had to improve the performance a lot and improve testing to a Q player and a lot of work in the background on, on, on code cleanup. All right, and um, so this is this is one project that's very, um, um, that I'm very fond of, um, that I'm, I'm working, I've been working on a lot, is the integration of NVIDIA uh, Layer 1 Accelerator. So NVIDIA Layer 1 Accelerator is, um, is a combination of um, a, a network card, so in this case, um, Mellanox uh, Connect XX and uh, NVIDIA um, GPU A100 um, that together form an inline layer one accelerator. So the physical layer um, runs entirely on the GPU, and the frontal is is handled by the by the network card. Um, it also works on their converged accelerators, so um, the A100X or the AX800. So that 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 is working out too, and in the future. Um, we're talking about maybe porting this also to their, their newest platform called the, the Grace Hopper um, uh, architecture. So, they, so um, NVIDIA, the NVIDIA Arial implements layer one, and it communicates to the OAI DU or DU High using the, the 5G FAP interface. So that's actually the first time we have real interoperability using the 5G FAP interface. Um, and the nice thing is that um, so both running containers, layer one runs in a container, um, layer two, uh, DU and CU running containers, um, and and you can uh, actually analyze the the, the FAPI interface, uh, the, the the message exchange, um, not in real time, but but after um, stopping, you can analyze that in in Wireshark. So for actually for for education and teaching. Uh, that's a very nice uh, thing to, to, you know, study FAPI and, and, and learn FAPI. Um, so the initial release was in, in March. There were a bunch of early adopters, including Northeastern. So they have deployed this, um, this system in their lab, not here in Burlington, but this one is in, in downtown Boston. Um, and now we have, um, we are about to release the, the second version that integrates Arial they have their own version number 23.3. Um, and now it's it, the, the public release of this branch is, is imminent. Uh, I'm still, I'm, um, it's promised still in um, November and hopefully merge it um, by the end of the year so that it becomes part of the next, of the next release. All right, um, and this is um, the slide with the, with the performance indicators. So this is, um, um, our partner, All Be Smart, um, who who keeps track of those of those numbers, so they are champions in uh, um, in generating the in in you know getting the last bit of performance out of the, out of the system. Um, so on the downlink, if you use the right TDD configuration, um, you can get um, up to 800 megabits um, with um, with a two-layer MIMO now with a single user. Um, these measurements have been done with a with a, uh, with an N310 um, in and, and the COTS UE. Um, on the uplink, um, 
The maximum performance you get is, is you see here there with 175 um, megabits per second. You'll notice that the performance decreases um, as you go to higher bandwidth. And one of this is, um, is, a, is, is uh, due to a um, um, small issue that we haven't managed to figure out completely with the N310, where you have a large PC component, so we don't schedule the whole bandwidth um, on, the, on the uplink. And for MIMO, there's actually, for up, uplink, two-layer uplink MIMO, um, there's another issue that, uh, that um, at least in the, in the setups that we had, we, the, there was even not enough power headroom to use all the bandwidth on the, on the uplink. So, but nevertheless, I think uh, that uh, that number here, 175 on the, on the uplink is a, is a good number, and, and we're very proud of that. All right, that's it for, for my part, and I hand over to Robert to address. Thank you, Florian. So I will now continue and make a brief tour over the different interfaces that, uh, well, I've entitled ORAN, or let's say in the general ORAN architecture. So, um, well, the one interface that's actually not shown in this figure here is the O1 interface, but nevertheless it exists. So we started to integrate OAI into an ONAP-based SMO, and there's actually a demo that we will have later. So if you're interested in that, you can uh, go and see the O1 demo. Uh, Florian already mentioned there is now the E2 agent that has been integrated into open air interface. And uh, now what we worked on, what we have shown earlier, is uh, the integration with, or the interoperability with OAI's own near real-time rig called uh, FlexRig. So, and there I think we have already shown multiple demos in the past. Uh, what we also did recently is have interoperability with the ORAN software community near real-time rig. And also there, there will be a demo that you can come and uh, see later. So overall, E2, uh, there is the E2 interface and can be used in order to steer and control the RAN using a control plane. Then the two interfaces that are not exactly ORAN, but I would like to mention here in this context is first the F1 uh, interface. So uh, we have already interoperability with um, 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 a third party CU from Acceleron and the open air interface uh, DU. Uh, one thing, and uh, Florian already mentioned, is that one of the recent, more recent thing is to actually have multiple DUs that are uh, controlled or connected to one CU. And uh, as a further step, what we want to do then is, of course, to have mobility. So this is in the, in the roadmap. I will mention this in a moment. And then between the uh, CU user plane and CU control plane, as you can see, lies the E1 interface. So, I mean, you, I mean, we, we worked on making this E1 interface more stable, so this exists for some time. Uh, it's not possible to have multiple CU user plane functions. I think that's uh, interesting for two things. First of all, for slicing, so that you might have CU UPs that are tailored to a specific slice. And second, if you have multiple DUs with a high throughput, so we have seen before these 800 megabits per second, of course, this cannot all go through one CU. So then you might also have multiple CU UPs um, for that. Then if we go a little bit down in the stack, we have the uh, 5G FAPI split. So all of the L1 procedures are compliant with uh, the specific FAPI 10.02 version, with the exception of a couple of messages from 10.04 that were used for technical reasons. Um, Florent already went into the details regarding the interoperability with the NVIDIA uh, real kit. And there is also 5G and FAPI support. So the uh, real uses FAPI. There's also basic NFAP support, but not interoperability as far as I know with any other um, equipment. So and then for the front hall, there is the classic version of using the USRP from national instruments using UHD. So this is a classical split eight option. There is also interoperability with on ECPRI with an AW2S unit. So this is also split eight. And uh, it has already been mentioned a couple of times, so the frontal, the 7.2 frontal split. So as uh, I think it was Raymond who mentioned this, we use here the XRUN library from the ORAN software community. Now recently in the e-release and interoperability with a light on RU unit, and we are working on having other uh, radio units integrated. 
So then if we just wrap up here, so we have seen a little bit already what has been achieved recently. So now the roadmap for the run starts in the quarter four, so the last part of the year. Um, so currently we are integrating the Oran 7.2 frontal into develop and have the general availability of this uh, feature. So F1 handover will come soon. I already mentioned multiple DUs connected to one CU. So then of course the interesting thing is handover across multiple cells. Uh, the LDPC encoding and decoding offload uh, via T2 is also currently under integration. So recently we had a, a, demo, a demo in Phoenix where we used the 7.2 front hole and also the T2 card in order to offload some of the functionality and we are integrating this into the develop branch. I already mentioned multiple DUs in CUUP, so this is basically done. And uh, then the other things, multiple RUs per DUs in order to do some cell-free MIMO with at least two RUs so that we can go towards some experimentation in that direction. And uh, we mentioned in the beginning in the OAI UE, there was a lot of work in order to have interoperability with third-party GNOTB. So currently we are doing the initial access and the full connection. This will come a little bit later. And then it has already been mentioned by Raymond as well, the FO2. Uh, so currently there is basic um, standalone access using the OAI UE and with the COD UE, we are on building the NSA interoperability and SA will likely come next year as soon as there are the suitable inter the, sorry, the suitable devices. So then if you look towards the next uh, year, so uh, as I mentioned, we use the uh, release E of the XRUN frontal library. So we want, of course, to use more recent releases. So this is on the roadmap for earlier next year. Then, as I also mentioned, for the OAUE, we want to have the full interoperability with the third-party GNOB. Um, we are still working on downloading MIMO four layers, so in order to hopefully then make the step over this magical one gigabit per second downloading um, threshold. And, um, well, the, the slicing until now in OAI is relatively limited, mostly because there is no real quality of service in the scheduler, so we'll be working on that and having a full integration uh, on site link in the OAI UE. And then maybe one of the uh, smaller activities that I think has not been mentioned too much. So there's also work on NRPP, so positioning in uh, the GNOB. So we are working on have support for that and also two step rush. And then if you look a little bit further into the future, I don't want to, I mean, this always depends a little bit on external contribution and whether this really lands like this but there's plan to have more beamforming procedures uh, in FO2, both for SA and NSA. Um, I already mentioned, so we want towards the end of the year have F1 handover on general mobility support. We would like to extend this also to the exchange via XN, so between multiple genome Bs, and then possibly short data transmission, and in general, if you have quality of service in the scheduler, then also to have uh, full slicing support. And then if you look towards the second half of next year, I hope we come at some point to proper bandwidth part handling across multiple UEs. So maybe you know there is kind of experimental support to have multiple bandwidth part with one UE. It doesn't work for multiple, so there's still uh, some work necessary in this direction. So this is the roadmap. Then uh, regarding the release process, so for some time there was no official release. Earlier this year in the summer, we made the first release version 2.0. So for a long time, I mean, basically the working branch that we use is developed, but of course we have this official master branch which was not updated for years and which was stuck on 4G. So we basically just uh, brought master up to date and made an official line and said, okay, now we have official, uh, an official 5G release. Then uh, some of the ideas that I have in mind for a future version 2.1 release that maybe comes towards the end of the year, beginning of next year would be uh, I would like to have like handover to a general mobility, um, also an official statement that we now finally have the 7.2 support and also then the NVIDIA a real platform that has already been discussed. And then if you go a little bit further towards maybe mid of next year to officially have a stable support of MIMO 4x4, that would be nice uh, to further increase the interoperability over the 7.2 frontal 
and uh, sidelink support because I think there are many people who are interested and the work there has been quite advanced. So overall, we want to do releases every three to four months, so ideally not to drag it out too much and certainly not as has been done pre version 2.0. Um, yeah. So, and then finally, we talked about RAN and the development and so on, but I have been asked to uh, talk a little bit about the CI CD and the overall workflow, how we work uh, in Open Air Interface. So, there it can be kind of divided into a human part and into the automated part. So, of course, first of all, the human part is to actually develop a new feature. Uh, I didn't list this in particular. Um, but then once you are ready and you have developed something, you should sign the contributor license agreement in order to get code accepted. And then typically we'll open a merge request and one of the senior developers, so maybe myself or others, will review this code, give some feedback and so on. And at this point then maybe also the automated uh, part starts. So there is a Jenkins uh, pipeline, I will show this in one moment. So basically you just say whether this is mostly 4G or 5G or some of this functionality and the uh, jobs will run. So there is like a container image build. There's also some static analysis and uh, many uh, pipelines that will be run. And um, yes, and let's assume that now the review process has been completed, the CI has run and so on. Then every week we discuss in a small, in like 30 minutes during the external developer call, call which merge request you want to integrate. And um, yes, then typically if everything goes fine, we do an integration branch once every week. So um, we typically do not do automatic acceptance of merge requests, but we always want to verify and in particular test multiple contributions together before this gets finally integrated. Um, yes, the one thing that I was asked to highlight in particular, so all every week when we have now a new integration, we uh, create a couple of images we always push them to the Docker Hub, so under this OAI Software Alliance um, um, name. So if you're interested, in theory, it should be very simple to set up op open air interface by just using one Docker Compose file, taking the images, and then you're actually good to go, at least as far as the software-only um, thing goes. So I just give, to make this not too dry, I have like three small pictures. So basically here you see how it would look like if you make a new contribution, so this was a merge request by Raphael, you see in the middle that he get the label build only to just run the build part, and in the middle there you see OAIs. Do I have the pointer? No, that doesn't work. In the middle, then there is like the OAI CI Jenkins bot, which says that it has passed ideally. So then if you would click on this, you see this general Jenkins overview, you see a couple of HTML files of all the pipelines that have been run. And you, if you click on one of them, then you will get more detailed uh, feedback. And of course, if we now go towards testing with radio, uh, then there would be many more HTML. So and now then the question is, so what do we currently test actually in the CI? So of course, the first is build, and there we currently build for x86 and since one or two months also for ARM using one cross compilation because we want to go further towards full support of ARM. Um, there is a range of tests that are based on USRP uh, with COTS UE and this actually for both 4G and also 5G. For 5G in particular, there is one test that uses these AW2S uh, RU and we test multiple UEs using an Amarisoft UE simulator. So currently up to 10 UEs, but we want to scale this further up to 64 and hopefully more. There is a test with uh, the open air interface UE and also the open air interface GNOME-B in an over the air uh, setting. And then there are a range of simulators for 4G and 5G using this RF simulator test, also physical simulator that test independent ch individual channels. And finally the L2 simulator. And if we look here a little bit at the roadmap of what we will see in the future. So, I mean, for those who don't know, OAI is coded in C. This is maybe not the most memory safe language. So we want to use more and more sanitizers because we regularly have to some extent some problems with that. Uh, we want to test more UEs than only those two. Uh, the 702 frontal, of course, will be tested in the CI to make sure that this uh, works uh, in general. Uh, the aerial inline accelerator, so we don't want to integrate this and then break it right away. So this will come into the CI and of course overall also UE tests, so 
OAI UE tests with third party GLOD. So, and with this, I will conclude. I thank you. Other questions? 